<laughs> Safe Abawi writhes in pain. The 13 year old hit by a Houthi missile in the Yemeni city of Marib. I can't breathe, I can't breathe, he cries. Still recovering a week later, he tells me what happened. We were playing football. The missile hit. My leg was injured. I couldn't breathe. One of my friends was dead and the other looked like he was about to die. In another ward, the hospital's deputy director shows me Safe's friend. And what, what's his condition? Yeah. Under sedation, he is clinging to life. Uh, he's in a bad way. How, how is it for you as a doctor to see so many injured children come in from all these rockets after all this time? An ophthalmologist by training. He says he has no words to describe the suffering, no choice but keep trying to help and hope that the fighting will end. But attacks on Marib spiked after President Biden began pressuring all sides to end the war. The American administration holds a big responsibility for this crime. They removed the Houthis from the terrorism list, but there is no greater terrorist than the Houthis. They should support us. Once a fabled desert oasis, Marib is now wartime sanctuary to more than two million people gateway to much of Yemen's gas and oil wealth and is the internationally recognized government's last major stronghold in northern Yemen. Marib is too important for the government to lose its vital leverage in any future peace talks. What happens here now is pivotal to the future of the country. In Marib's many internally displaced people or IDP camps, life is lived in the balance. Nine-year-old Dua has been throwing up. Her mother tells us Houthi attacks are making Dua very afraid. When we hear the missiles land close by, we're all scared, she says. Around the city, tent camps of recently displaced are growing. Aid officials fear a Houthi offensive may force many here to flee again. Definitely, because they keep moving now. Most we have a lot of IDBs who've been displaced for the second and third, some of them fourth time. So that, that definitely there will be a lot of other movements for people, and then adding to the suffering. A Yemeni military trip to the front line reveals how precarious the city is. Soldiers in the truck tell us that there's fighting around here every day for the past few months. The reason we're driving so fast, well, that's because of the danger. And the guy at the wheel, that's the army chief of staff. On the way, he stops, greets tribal leaders, without whose fighters he can't hold the front line. And another stop, this time with his own troops, both he and the information minister trying to raise morale promising troops they'll get the back pay they are due. The front itself, a small dirt berm. Dust rises from Houthi vehicles and shooting starts. This car is for the enemy. His troops are losing ground, beaten off strategic mountain heights. Houthis closer to Marib. Okay, we have to go. We're pulling back from the front line. The commander felt it was just getting too dangerous. That exchange of gunfire was heating up and it wasn't quite clear to him how it was going to play out. We stop near a ramshackle gun emplacement. Military hardware here is old, scattered and scarce. Nothing here that couldn't be overrun in a hurry. They're relying on Saudi coalition airstrikes, which have already caused more than 18,500 Yemeni civilian deaths to hold the Houthis back and feel weakened 
by Biden's decision to end American military support for it. America's decision hurt us, and we hope that the American administration will go back on their decision. A State Department spokesperson says President Biden has made ending the war in Yemen a top priority, adding we continue to take action against those who threaten the peace, security and stability of Yemen. But, adding, US efforts alone are not enough. We need a unified international effort, particularly to press the Houthis to end their offensive on Marib.